There are days when you need to send out dozens, maybe even hundreds of personalized letters or emails. If you've been doing that manually, stop right there, there's a better way. Let me introduce you to Mail Merge, your new best friend. With just Microsoft Word and Excel, you can generate personalized documents in bulk. It's fast, simple and honestly feels a little bit like magic. In this video, we'll walk you through examples a basic step-by-step -step process for beginners and then a more advanced setup that really pushes mail merge to its limits. Ready to save hours of work? Let's start off with something every business owner does. Send out promotional content. I have an Excel file over here with customer data. I have names, addresses, email IDs and their own personalized discount code. Pro tip for beginners, always, and I mean always, make sure that your first row contains the column headers. Trust me, you'll thank me later when Mail Merge isn't trying to send out a letter to someone named first name or someone named last name. Now, over in Word, I've created a simple promotional letter template and most importantly, it has clear spots of where our dynamic content will go. For instance, the name, the discount code and even the email address. Now let's move on to the actual process. So the first step is to click on mailings. Once you do, you'll see start mail merge. Since we're sending out the letter, I am going to click on letters over here. And the next step is to click on recipients. Either I can type out a new list or I can use an existing list. I am going to use the Excel file, the customer data one from earlier. Let me locate it and here I go. So it will take some time to load and once it does, as you can see address block, greeting line, insert merge fields are all not working or rather they're not available right now. This box will come up, it will tell you the various sheets under the spreadsheet. I just have to select the right one and I have to make sure that first row of data contains column headers is selected and my actual Excel sheet has first row of data with column headers. I click on OK. It takes a little bit of time. And once it's done, you can see that address block, greeting line and insert merge fields are available. This is the fun part. See where I have dear name, discount and email address. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select that placeholder. Let me show it. I select it. I click on insert merge fields and these are the column headers that are available on my Excel sheet. That's what will come up over here. And then I click on name. So there you have it. We have a placeholder ready. Let me do this for all the dynamic spots. I'll do it for discount codes as well. I have the last one, which is email address. Now, if I want to highlight something, for instance, on my file, I've highlighted discount code. It's in bold. I can also do the same for this or I can make it in italics up to me. Once this is done, this is where I really enjoy mail merge. So all I have to do is click on preview results and I'll be able to see their information. For instance, Joel Buck is the first one on the Excel sheet. Then we have Harold Barnes with his own personalized code and unique email ID. So as you can see, there are about 20 people over here. And the last name is Elizabeth Weiss. Likewise, I have 20 recipients. And the last name is uh, Elizabeth Weiss. So if I use the navigation arrows, I can switch between the records. This is like a sneak peek before the actual big reveal. I'm completely ready. I'm done. I've made all the changes that I want. So all I have to do is click on finish and merge. Once I do so, I have the option to send email, print documents or edit individual documents. Let's say if I want to print them out. I just have to select if I want all the documents or specific numbers. And once I do so, it will reconnect to the printer. Of course, since we're not printing it out, I'm just going to click on cancel over here. So again, we go back to finish and merge, click on edit individual documents. I'm going to select all. So what this does is it creates an entire new word file with all the personalized information. So each page represents one email. 
So we have Dear Joel Buck with his information, Harold Barnes and David Watkins. If I scroll down right to the bottom, I will find Elizabeth Wise over here. So this is very simple and it's something that would have normally taken you hours if you're doing it manually. But with Mail Merge, you can do it in the span of a couple of minutes. That's about it. All right, time to separate the beginners from the Mail Merge Masters. We're going to create a complex invoice system that includes calculations, conditional formatting, and email automation. This is where we push Mail Merge to its absolute limits. As you can see, my Excel file looks like a tiny database. Here's where it gets tricky. Mail Merge doesn't love complex calculations, so I'm doing all my math on Excel. An advanced tip I give people is to use Excel formulas to create exactly what you want to appear in your document. Mail Merge is great at pulling data, not so good at scrunching it. Notice how I have columns for service description, quantity, unit, price, subtotal, tax rate, tax amount, and the total amount. Each row represents a complete invoice with all the data pre-calculated. Now let's take a look at the invoice template. This invoice template is not messing around. I have a professional header, tax calculations, payment terms. The secret sauce, I've created this table structure in Excel first, and then I've copied it to Word. It's a little hack that saves a ton of formatting headaches. I've already inserted the merge fields everywhere invoice numbers, customer details, service description, amounts, units, dates. So the only thing I haven't done is the subtotal. Just like the last template we looked at, we do the same procedure. We click on start mail merge. This time we select normal word document because I'm not sending out letters. Click on select recipients, use an existing list. And I will use this Excel sheet to populate my data. So as you can see over here, once I click on insert merge fields, I have all the headers that were there in the Excel sheet. Let me include these as well. So I'm clicking on subtotal, the tax amount, as well as the total amount. Now, if I have to preview the results, I can see all the information from the customer ID, to the name as well as the total. All of it has already been calculated and we can see the data on the Word template. Okay, so this is where beginners make a common mistake. They get a very overwhelmed with all the extra information and the various merge fields. What I'll tell people is to start from the header and work your way down. Working on it systematically helps you save time and reduces errors as well. Now let's look at really pushing the boundaries of mail merge. What if you want to add some content based on certain conditions? For instance, in my Excel sheet, I have added a repeat customers column with yes and no. And in my invoice, for existing customers or recurring customers, I will be adding a gift card for those who are uh, regular. And for those who are new, there'll be a short appreciative message. Here's a smart way to go about it. Position your cursor where you want the conditional content and then go to the Mailings tab. In the Mailings tab, click on the Rules drop-down. Once you do, click on If, then Else. And you'll get a user-friendly dialog box. So here, I just have to select the right header, which is Repeat Customer. I have to go Equal To and in the Compare To box, I type Yes. Remember, Word, Excel, Mail Merge, they're all case sensitive. You have to type exactly what is written over there. And in the insert this text, so for those who are recurring customers, I'm going to include this text, which refers to the gift card. And for those who aren't, I am going to include a different text. Just a short appreciative message. All I have to do is click on OK and Word creates conditional logic for you. As you can see, we're on the third report. Let's see, the third person is not a repeat customer, while the first person in the list is. Let me show you that. I just have to click on the navigation arrows and here I have it. So the first person, I show Connor. Uh, we truly appreciate your loyalty as a transatlantic solutions customer. Enjoy this $50 gift card attached. 
and for the next person you have just a short appreciative message so the rules tab has a lot of options so there's also the skip record if this is really helpful if you want to completely skip records that don't meet specific criteria super handy for targeted mailings now that we've done the entire template I'd like to show some other hidden gems that Mail Merge has. Let me blow your mind with these features. Fuck. First up is the address block. This is where Mail Merge gets really fancy. Instead of manually inserting merge fields for address line 1, 2, city, state, zip code, especially in cases where people have three addresses or more, Word has a solution. Click on address block and you get this beautiful dialog box that handles all the formatting for you. It will stack the address lines properly, handle international formats, and here's the kicker. It's enough to skip empty address lines, no more invoices with random blank lines because someone doesn't have an apartment number. You can preview the different formats right in the dialog. Want it formal? You can keep the full name. If you want it just casual or use an international style, you can opt for just the first name. Whatever it may be, you have a lot of styles to choose from. This is especially brilliant for envelopes and formal correspondence where address formatting actually matters. I'm going to remove this now because I don't need this. But let me quickly show this to you. So there you have it, the entire name with the address and for different people. But let me remove this. Now the next thing that I want to show you guys is the greeting line. Because dear first name is a little basic, you can always click on greeting line and you'll get options that will amaze you. So you have dear, two, or just leave it as none. And you can find different formats of writing the name. So for instance, you can opt for the full name, or you can just opt for the first name, a nickname, or even the entire family's name, up to however you want to do it. So there you have it. For different records, you have different ways of greeting lines. Again, this is not required for my template, so I'm going to remove this as well. The preview shows exactly how each greeting line will look for different records. And if you're missing any data, you can always opt for a very standard fallback like dear sir or madam. Next, let's look at match fields. This is available on the mailings tab as well. It gets a little technical, but stick with me because this is huge. If you click on match fields, you'll see words attempt to connect your Excel columns to its standard field. This is absolutely critical for address blocks and greeting lines to work properly. Say your Excel says customer name, but Word expects last name. Match fields lets you map them together, as you can see over here. So match fields lets you map them together. It's like it's a translator between your real world messy data and Word's perfectly organized expectations. Now to my favorite feature, which is Highlight merge fields. Uh, say you get a document, a mail merge document from someone else and you need to know what are all the merge fields that are there. And all you have to do is just click on highlight merge fields and it lights up like an entire Christmas tree. You can just go off preview results. You can see all the various merge fields that are available. And I always tell people to check this out before they send out any documents or any emails to their customers. Because trust me when I say this, nothing screams amateur like accidentally leaving customer name in your final document just because you missed the merge feed, right? And finally, for the check errors options. This is very helpful and it's a safety net for your mail merge. Before you send out 500 personalized emails to your entire customer base, always make it a point to run this check. You get three options. You can choose whichever one you like over here. I normally choose the first one. I simulate a merge and ask it to report the errors in a new document. This makes sure that I catch anything like missing email addresses, formatting errors, data type mismatches before they become embarrassing mistakes. Trust me, it's better to find out your date fields are messed up before your customers do. And for the final step, we are going to go ahead and send out this document. So for this, I just have to click on Finish mail merge. So for the previous template, we looked at editing individual documents and printing them out. This time we're going to send an email to them. So as you can see, I am in the current record and as per my Excel sheet, 
everything has a fake email address except the first record which is of course my own name and my own email address i'm just doing it for the video to show you guys how it will work so i have to click on finish and merge i click on send email messages i have the option to select email then i can put a subject line i can also send it either as an attachment plain text or html but i'm going to choose html for this i can select all but for the purposes of our video i'm going to click on current record you'll see how it's sent and how quick and easy it is once i click on okay watch mail merge send a personalized invoice to in my case just one email but typically it's for dozens of customers automatically it's like having a personal assistant who never takes coffee breaks let me see if i've received the email there i have it so it was sent right away i just have to click on it and i can see the email so this is how the email looks i have my gift card and all the information over here everything is personalized all the details are correct Now finally I'd just like to talk to you guys about a couple of mail merge tips and tricks for beginners. You've seen how mail merge handles the basics. Now let's make it work smarter and talk about what to do when it hits its limits. First up, let's make the most of field codes. Field codes are where the magic really happens. With just a few clicks, you can level up your merges. On the screen, you'll see some useful formatting switches. Pause the screen to note it down. There's if conditions, merge sequence for numbering your items and formatting switches that help you clean up your data. Now, let's look at how to keep our templates modular instead of recreating every doc. Save your headers, footers or tables as separate files and reuse them across projects for consistency. Especially helpful when you're working across teams. Now, Something that you have to know is when mail merge hits its limits it's not invincible it struggles with complex logic beyond basic if conditions dynamic tables advanced content formatting real time data or databases beyond excel and in document calculations these are some of its problems but likewise there are also some smart workarounds as well if you want personalized images like a signature try this You want to restart page numbers per recipient, use section breaks as well as what you see on the screen. Want an audit trail? Insert the footer and use the information on the screen. Now, when mail merge isn't enough, if you're hitting limits often, like needing expandable tables, real-time data or complex layout, it may be time for something more advanced. Perfect Doc Studio is built for exactly such situations. It has dynamic sections, tables, database integration, rich formatting and conditional logic, as well as multilingual support. Mail merge covers 80 to 90% of your needs, but for high volume, high stakes documents, Perfect Doc Studio picks up where mail merge stops. That's the full journey everyone, from basics to power tricks to smarter alternatives. If you like Perfect Doc Studio, there's a free trial link in the description. There's no need for a credit card. If this helped, hit the like button, subscribe for more tips and let me know what you'd like to learn next. Remember, automation isn't just about speed, it's about clarity, consistency and control.